Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video, I'm super excited. This is a fun video that I have been wanting to do for a while now, and I've seen a couple other content creators do this style of video, and I always think it's so, so fun. So this is Battle of the Perfumes. I have some fragrances here that people have said smell similar, or I've had questions on whether they smell similar, and I'm here to tell you which perfumes I think actually smell similar to one another, whether or not they're redundant to have in your collection and which one I actually prefer. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here. To my returning subscribers, thank you guys so, so much for all your continued support. I really, truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you are notified when I upload. I try to upload two videos per week. Let's get into this video. All right, the whole reason why I started to kind of get this idea, not that I'm the first person to ever do this, but the reason why I started to think about doing a video like this is because I did a review on Juliet Has a Gun, Lust for Sun. I did a full dedicated review on it absolutely love this fragrance and a lot of people started asking me questions about if this fragrance smells similar to other fragrances in this scent family and profile. So this is a white floral dominant fragrance that smells tropical and also has some coconut in it. So the other fragrances that I have in my collection that I can compare them to, I had some questions on some perfumes that I don't own so I can't really answer that but these are the ones I own and I feel like like they're in the same family. So we have by Mugler, this is Alien Goddess Intense. This is also white floral coconut fragrance, but the white florals are the star of the show, namely Jasmine. And then we also have by Kaoli, we have Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. Again, white floral dominant. I get mostly Jasmine with some coconutiness. Now, what are the comparisons? Are they too similar to have all three? Which one do I prefer? All of that. So I would say that these two fragrances here are more similar to each other than Lust for Sun. So the reason why I'm saying that is because I get Jasmine in both of these fragrances first and foremost. However, I do find these to be different and I do find a place for them in my collection. I have no plans to declutter either of these fragrances because I do use these for different occasions, a different, not occasions, but different seasons. So let's start with Kaoli's Utopia Vanilla Coco 20. Like I said, I get jasmine from this fragrance and I was really surprised when I first tried this because I thought it was going to be coconut forward, but it's white floral forward and it took me a minute to kind of get used to that because it's not what I was expecting, but I love this scent profile. I love a good white floral coconutty fragrance. This smells absolutely amazing. It does have vanilla in the dry down, but it also has a muskiness to it that I find makes this the most probably wearable. They're all wearable to me, but this one's the most, like the easiest one to wear. This is the one I wanna wear in the summer. So there's something about this fragrance that makes it airy and light so it never feels cloying. Even though jasmine can be a heavy white floral, this does not feel like a heavy jasmine to me. To me, this is just very smooth. The jasmine's there, but it's not thick. It's not indolic, it's not dense. There's vanilla, again, not super dense, and that airy, musky quality in the base really makes this easy to wear in the heat. So I love this fragrance. I think it smells so good. And when it's over 80 degrees outside, this is the one I would choose. Now, this one is also jasmine forward. Obviously, it's alien. It does have that very specific alien jasmine DNA in here, but to me, it's toned down a little bit from the OG. It's a lot more wearable, but it is still heavier. It's way heavier in here than it is in here, in my opinion. And so this one is more of a fall, winter. I can get away with wearing this in the spring, but I don't know that I could wear this in the dead heat. This is a lot thicker, a lot denser. The vanilla feels a lot more, yeah, thick and dense. 
There's a lot of amber in this fragrance. It's very warm. It's ambery. It's warm. So yes, these are very similar. They're definitely in the same family, but I don't, I need both of the, I don't need, I don't need either one of these, <laughs> but I feel like I want both of these in my collection because this is hot weather and this is, you know, for the rest of the time, basically. When I go through this this summer, I will be purchasing a full-size bottle because I absolutely love this fragrance and I do get really good performance, but it's not overpowering. It's not super strong. So, you know, I can wear it in the warm weather. This one has really good performance as well, but again, I think it's too thick. It's too dense. It's too ambery for hot weather. So, love both of these fragrances. I don't know how to pick between these two. I really don't. I don't know. I guess if I had to, I'd probably go with Alien Goddess Intense because I really love this fragrance. But now let's throw Lust for Sun in the mix. This again is a white floral dominant fragrance and I would say I smell white florals in here more than I do in the other two. Even though the jasmine is super prominent in Alien Goddess, there's jasmine and gardenia in here and I smell both. So you do have to be a fan of white florals to enjoy this fragrance, which I am. There's definitely coconut in here, like there's coconut in the other two, but coconut is not the star of the show in any of these fragrances. What makes this different is that there's yellow florals in here as well. So I do pick up a very tropical vibe, but I don't think that this is a fragrance I could wear in the dead heat. Even though it does have a very tropical feel to it with the yellow florals and the coconut, the white florals are the star of the show and it really reminds me more of spring than it does summer. Even though this kind of smells like what I envision Hawaii to smell like. It's a new fragrance, so I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it, but I would say this is an 80 degree fragrance, but I don't know if I could handle it in anything else. So late spring, early summer, when you're really starting to get in the mood for that summertime beachy feel, this is a perfect fragrance. This has been on my tray for May and I have been loving it. This is a perfect May fragrance in my opinion. And I've already put this is a dent from May. <laughs> I've already put a decent sized dent in this fragrance because I adore this fragrance. So they're not all the same. Yes, they are definitely in the same family. 100%. For some people, these might be redundant and you might feel like you don't need all three. For me personally, I absolutely love this scent profile, so I am just fine with having all three of these in my collection and I do not plan on getting rid of any of them. If I had to choose though, this would be the winner. Juliet Has a Gun, Lust for Sun is a huge hit for me, plus the performance has been amazing. The winner would have to be Lust for Sun. All right, I recently purchased Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Blush, which is also on my tray for May, and I've been loving this one. I think this one smells so, so good, and I was kind of surprised with the comparisons. When I look on Fragrantica, and this reminds me of Section, it's kind of all over the place. I saw Delina on there, which kind of shocked me because I don't get Delina vibes from this perfume. Some people were saying this smells really similar to Very Good Girl, which I don't get that either. I mean, there is a small DNA of that in here. There's rose for sure, but yeah, I'm not, there's peony in here. I get peony more than I get rose, so I really didn't understand that one, but the one that made sense to me a little bit more was Mont Blanc Signature. I recently just purchased this one. These both have citruses in the opening. They have peony in the mid, and I think that's where people are getting the comparisons, and so I was, yeah, I was super curious about this one. People have been talking about this one and hyping this one up for so many years and finally I just said, you know what, I gotta try it for myself. The differences between these two are definitely there, but I can see why people think these smell similar. They do kind of. Like I said, they're both citrusy peony fragrances. This one has vanilla in the base and there's also rose in here as well. There is a tartness to this and I definitely pick it up more when I compare these two side by side. I pick up that tart rose in here, but I still don't think it smells like Delina. <laughs> This is citrusy, peony, rose, a little bit of tartness, but also some sweetness and a lot of vanilla in the base. This one is citruses, there's clementine in the opening, there's a lot of peony, and then in the base there is a lot of muskiness. So I think it just depends on you and what you prefer. Do you like the idea of a vanilla dry down or do you like the idea of a musky dry down? Do you like the idea of added rose and a little bit of tartness? 
or not. You know, you just have to kind of ask yourself what your preferences are. For me, I think these are different enough that I can completely see myself keeping both of these. I have no desire to declutter either one. I really do like this one. I don't think it's worth, I mean, the hype on this one got kind of out there. <laughs> I think this one got really, really hyped for a while. I, I think it's a good fragrance, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's anything that I'm gonna lose my mind over. But as far as just an everyday, easy reach kind of fragrance, I think this is good. I will warn you though that some people can't handle the musk in here. Some people find the musk to be too screechy for them. So I think it depends on you, your tolerance for musk, your skin chemistry. I don't find the musk in here to be screechy at all. I think it's smooth, it smells good, I like it, it's easy to wear, and you know, I would wear both of these for the same occasion. So no, they don't smell exactly alike, but both of these are really good daytime, brunch, shopping with your friends type of fragrances. Easy reach, girly girl, really good smelling fragrances that you could just wear during the daytime. So yeah, I really do like both of them. I wanna keep both of them. If I had to choose between them, I would choose Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush. I slightly prefer this one. I think this one smells incredible. I really have fallen for this. Plus I love the stiletto. I know not everybody does, but this pink stiletto is giving me life and I love it. So I would choose this one, but I do think they're both good. Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush would be the winner. Up next, these two fragrances get compared to each other a lot and this is more one of the times when I don't really understand the comparisons because to me these smell like different fragrances but a lot of people seem to think that they smell similar so let's talk about it. This is by Attar Collection. This is Crystal Love for Her and people say it smells a lot like Swiss Arabian's Casablanca. Now I get that they're both very very sweet fragrances but I don't think they smell similar. So this one is one of my favorite perfumes to wear during the fall, especially around Halloween. This has green apple and grapes in the opening, but I get a lot of green apple specifically. And then the base of this is a lot of caramel. Very, very sweet. There's more going on to this than just the caramel in the base. There's suede in here. So to me, this smells like a perfume version of a caramel apple. You know, it's not super realistic, like photorealistic caramel apple. It's not a foodie kind of fragrance. It has other notes in it that keeps it from being foodie, like the suede, but that's the picture I get in my mind when I smell this. I smell green apples and caramel, and it reminds me of Halloween, and I just love this one in the fall amazing performance. This is beast mode. <laughs> beast, beast mode. I don't need very many sprays when I wear this. I really only wear this in the fall, but when fall comes, I just love to wear this fragrance. I also really love Crystal Love for her, but to me, this is milk chocolate. There's some fruits in the opening, so I kind of get that sweet fruity vibe. It just says fruits. I don't know what fruits are in here, but I don't get apple. This is specifically apple to me. This just smells fruity, sweet fruity. And then there's milk chocolate in the mid, which I definitely pick up on. And then there is some white musk in the base and a lot of vanilla. So to me, this is a fruity, chocolatey vanilla. And this is a apple caramel. <laughs> so I don't yeah, I just don't get the compare. I don't think they smell similar at all, but some people do. So I would love to know from you. Let me know in the comment section, do you think these smell similar? Because I'm not getting that, but that's okay. We're all different. We all have different noses and I've heard more than one person say they think these smell the same, so maybe it's me. I don't know. I love both of these fragrances. I don't know that I could pick, to be honest, because they're so different to me that I don't, I don't know how to pick between the two because they don't smell the same. <laughs> I think they're both incredible. This one has amazing performance as well. It's not quite the beast that Casablanca is, but no issues with the performance on Crystal Love for her. Ooh, I don't know, guys. I really love both of these fragrances. I have zero desire to get rid of either one of them. I think if I had to choose, I'd probably slightly, just slightly prefer Crystal Love for her. They're both good value for money, in my opinion. I recommend both of them. We have Vanilla Woods by The Seven Virtues, and then we have Silky Woods by Goldfield and Banks. I recently just got a decant of this. These two get compared all the time. I do get the similarities between these two, but there's also a lot of differences. Yes, this says vanilla wood, so you would think this is a woody fragrance, but there are actually no woody notes in here. This fragrance is pear, caramel, and vanilla. 
and it has a little bit of a smoky vibe to it as well in the opening. That doesn't last very long on me. This one is very sweet, a little bit smoky in the opening, and then I get a lot of that caramel and vanilla in the dry down. This fragrance has a lot of a similar, like the opening smells a little similar to me. The type of vanilla that is in this fragrance is in this fragrance. At least that's what my nose picks up anyway. I kind of get that same really, really sweet vanilla vibe from both of these fragrances. But the dry down is completely different in my opinion. This has oud. This has suede, I think. There's sandalwood. I think there's saffron in here as well. So it's darker. It's definitely a darker base. It definitely has some suede touches and a lot of woodiness in the dry down. So I'd say the opening of both of these is pretty similar, but the dry downs are different. So if you're looking for, you know, if this one's too sweet, you want something a little darker, a little deeper, you might want to check out Silky Woods. The suede, or maybe it's leather, I can never remember what's in here, but whatever it is, it's very smooth. It's not too much. It's not over the top for me. And oud scares me, but the oud in here is really slight. It's not overpowering or barnyard smelling or anything like that. So I really like this one. I'll have to see if I want a full bottle. Once I get more you know, experience with the fragrance, I'll have to test it out in the fall and winter and see if I want a full bottle. But as of right now, I do prefer uh, Vanilla Woods just because I love this perfume. This is one of my all-time favorite fragrances and as you can see by the dent last year 2022 this was my most worn fragrance. I believe I put a huge dent in this fragrance and I couldn't stop wearing it because it is just so good. One of my favorite vanillas in my collection for sure. So I do prefer this one but I do really like Silky Woods as well and I do think that they're different enough that you could justify having both of these in your collection. The last comparison we're gonna do today, we have another one by Atar Collection. This is Cult at Night, compared to Parfums de Marly Wajon. Now, sometimes people will compare Angel Share to these two fragrances as well. I don't think that they smell very similar at all, so I'll just briefly mention that. Angel Share to me is very woody in the base. So it's very boozy, it's cinnamon, apple pie, with a lot of oak in the base. The only thing I feel like Angel Share has in common with these two fragrances is the cinnamon and the apple vibe. Other than that, the perfumes go in completely different directions in my opinion, because there's no booziness in here, and these two have very dark patchouli bases, not woody oak bases. So I really don't think that Angel Share is a good comparison to these two fragrances. They just dry down completely differently, at least to my nose. But these two, however, these two are very, very similar. And I didn't realize how similar they were until I actually compared them side by side. And I was kind of shocked at how similar they smell, especially in the dry down and in the air. You, you have a hard time telling the difference between the two. The only real difference between these two, for me anyway, is in the opening. So this is definitely a cinnamon and apple kind of fragrance, but there's no apple in here. It's not like ooey gooey apple pie to me. It smells more like spiced apples. Spiced apples with a very labdanum, patchouli, darker, almost kind of like Middle Eastern kind of base. And then this one is also apple, cinnamon and apple, but there's also a lot of cherry in this fragrance as well. And that's really the only difference I get is that cherry note in the opening that Wajan does not have. But when this dries down, this is definitely a warm, spicy, cinnamon, patchouli, darker, Middle Eastern kind of base that's pretty similar to this fragrance. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised at how kind of redundant these two are. And I have gone back and forth and back and forth on whether or not I need to keep both of these in my collection. Honestly, I don't think I have the strength. <laughs> I don't think I have the willpower or the desire to get rid of either one of these because I adore this scent profile, especially in the fall and winter. These two fragrances feel like the holidays for me. This is Thanksgiving, Christmas, winter, warm, cozy, sexy, amazing fragrances. They're both incredibly unisex, like straight down the middle for me. Although I will say that some people do say Wajan is a little bit more on the masculine leaning side, but I don't find that to be the case for me. I feel like both of these are straight down the middle unisex. 
and yeah, I feel comfortable wearing both of them. They both have fantastic performance. I guess if I had to recommend one, I'd say Cult at Night just simply because this is more affordable. On discounted websites, you can get this for around $100. And this is super long lasting, super strong. You're never gonna go through this entire bottle unless this is like the only perfume you ever wear. <laughs> you don't need that many sprays. Wajan is also beast mode, really, really good performance, but this is a lot more expensive. So if you're looking at this fragrance and you want something similar, I'm not saying that they're one-to-one -one exact dupes, okay? They do have some differences, but they're pretty similar. So if you're looking for something that's quite like this one, you might want to give Cult at Night a try because it is more affordable. But I really genuinely love both of these. So I'm not planning on getting rid of them. I love them both. I do think I slightly recommend. I don't know that I prefer this one. <laughs> I can't choose between these two, okay? I just can't do it. But I slightly recommend this one a little bit more just because it's more affordable. So that is by Parfums de Marley with Jean and also by Atar Collection Cult at Night. Both absolutely fantastic fragrances. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Those are my battle of the perfumes and I would love to hear from you. Let me know your opinions on these fragrances. Have you tried them? What do you think about them? And also let me know if you like this style of video. I have many more fragrances that I could compare to each other that are in the same family. So if you like this style of video, let me know. I can do a part two and just let me know in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye!